Jesse Marie does stuff. Take umpteen. Hello there everybody, how's it going? It's Jessie from Jessie Marie Does Stuff here on Flostume and I'm here with my, hey guess what, it's Wednesday. It's time for a web update. Uh, in the introduction, you might have noticed that I mentioned that this happens to be my umpteenth take. And that's because I have stopped counting how many times it's taken me to record this. The first few takes featured some Thor, but he's kind of crazy today. Uh, the next few takes, I realized that my glasses super glary. The last two takes, I finally switched to my contacts, but my eyes are like trying to get adjusted to wearing the contacts, and so I kept like doing like <laughs> just funny little things and blinking too much, which I think I'm still doing. Oh yeah, there was an itchy nose take. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because that's unavoidable. Um, it's, it's been a, it's been a trial. So we're going to give this a go, and we'll see what happens. The good news is, this is the furthest I've made it in any of the takes thus far, so, woohoo! Um, so, what have we got to talk about? So many things. Um, before I get into the stitchy stuff, Real quickly, I just wanted to thank everybody for your well wishes for Thor last week. Um, he was just fine. Uh, later that afternoon, he got up and he was perfectly fine, back to his normal self. Um, he did get sick one more time and dislodged the very tiny little piece of plastic that he swallowed that he was not supposed to have. Um, so we are limiting the bottle chewing. He's not happy about it, but what are you going to do? Uh, but he's fine. Totally, totally okay. Um, but your well wishes were very, very happily received. I kept telling Thor, and I swear he kept giving me the face like, I understand, go away. <laughs> Silly dog. Um, another thing, uh, sort of like mini announcement, is that my convenient VT Tervis is in the dishwasher. So I'm drinking out of a water bottle that's 25% less plastic, so it makes all kinds of noise. But it's necessary, so forgive me. I guess I could have grabbed a straw. But whatever, we'll just, we'll roll with it. Maybe during one of these breaks I'll go grab a straw or something. Any whoosie what? Um, so many projects to talk about because we are in the midst of my week four and my week four is like 14, it's like almost two full weeks. No, it's not quite that much. Anyway, it's an extra long week because August is 31 days. Um, lots of projects. And as you guys know, in my fourth week of my rotation, it is a daily rotation through the rest of my whips. So, many a projects to talk about. Um... So I suppose we'll just get started. I organized everything this time, so everything is out of their envelopes and just in order stacked up right here except for that one back there. Um, so like this should be pretty smooth, you know, barring everything else that I've gone through this morning or this afternoon. It's a quarter to two. Oh my gosh. Anyway. Um, so let's go ahead and get started. So when I spoke to you guys last, I was working on my Long Dog Samplers um, Opus 2, a.k.a. Maggie. I was in the middle of my week 3 of my rotation, and I still had a couple more days to work on that. So you'll be seeing right here a preview of what it will look like finished. And then you will also be seeing what it looked like the last time that I showed it to you. So I am stitching this piece on a 28 count antique white Kesha linen by Zweigart and I'm stitching it using only DMC 924 and this is the progress that I made. How cool, huh? I think it was pretty successful. The last two days after my last video weren't as successful as maybe I had hoped, but 
nonetheless, I got a pretty big motif done, and that was pretty much my plan. I also got a couple more of the little ones, including this plant, there's a crown, and then these two there. You may be able to see it. I got to do some frogging, which is why the progress was halted. You can kind of still see the evidence of the green left in that region. Yeah, had to pull that out and restitch it, or I will have to restitch it. I haven't yet. Um, but I decided that once I had frogging to do, that was enough. I will put this project down. I'll take it as a sign. The universe is trying to tell me something. Jess, you've had enough. So, I, I mean, I consider last week to be really, really productive. I got a gigantic motif, this big one down here, done. And then another big one, plus a pile of little ones. So, yeah, I'm pretty stoked. And I'm still obsessing over how good that looks. I just, I can't get over it. This is going to look so good once it's all done and once I get it framed in like 10 years. But still, I, I'm, I'm a big fan. Love this piece. Looking forward to its um, return. Not sure when that will be, but that's that. And just for reference, so this was the first one that I did a long time ago. And then this is the big one that I accomplished last week. And this one here is the other big one. So, I mean, you know, still plenty of work left to do. I am not in the home stretch by any imagination. But I almost said stretch of the imagination, so stretch. You get it. Um, <laughs> so plenty of work left to do, like I was saying. But nonetheless, some good progress was made last week, so... I think the rotation is working. That's pretty cool. Okay, so that stopped on Friday. Um, originally it was supposed to go through Sunday, but I've talked to you guys about it a thousand times. The way that I'm running this rotation this month is that uh, my weeks are over as of the weekends because I was doing the Summer Olympics Challenge. Since that's over, that's not the case anymore. I'm still making my all the glitters for the Stitch Mania month long sal, my weekend pieces, but my rotation is still continuing through the weekend, but we'll go over that. So, Saturday was um, my all the glitters piece, and my all the glitters for this week was some bead kits. And by some bead kits, I mean one. Um, I chose to work on Christmas Letter by Milhel. You'll be seeing a preview here of what it looked like the last time you saw it. Um, and this was a mania start, so you haven't seen it since the beginning of May. I think I started it on May 8th. And I have a finish. So I got the whole thing done. Beads and all. See, there's a lot of cream beads in there. Even some purple ones, which is kind of weird, but, you know, hey. Um, and then the amethyst charm there down at the bottom, just kind of dangling. So this is just about an FFO, and I think this is my third Mill Hill finish of this year. I mean, ever, for that matter. So I'm really pleased, and I love the way that it looks. Um... The pattern calls for long backstitch for the letter, and I, I really like it. I think it looks really cool. So yay! There's a finish. It's finish number 10 for me this year. No, it's not. I'm lying. I'm not lying, but I think, I think I've got less than that. I think it might be 7. I don't know. Let me see. Let me see real quickly here. I have 10 finishes this year. They're all teeny tiny. That's why I don't think it's that much. They're all very small projects, but nonetheless, 10 finishes. That's awesome. So, there's that. Now, when I talked to you guys last, I mentioned that um, 
if I got this finished that I would pull out another Mill Hill kit to work on, let's say on Sunday. I didn't actually do that. I just, I figured, I went gangbuster on this to get it done on Saturday. That's cool. So that's all that I worked on uh, for all the glitters, but the finish is pretty cool. Okay, so then Sunday. I talked to you guys last week that on Sunday we were supposed to go up north to go to DC to um, go to brunch with my brother. Well, that ended up being postponed to this coming weekend because there was some threatening weather. And my mom was like, let's not do this. So I'm like, okay. So we ended up staying home and it worked out nicely because, if I'm honest, because Danny was not very well <laughs> on Sunday. Um, I told you guys he had his fantasy draft on Saturday night. Uh, so I think I went to go pick them up at like one in the morning. They had been there since three in the afternoon. It was a long day. So Sunday was recovery day for him. Plus, not to mention, the NASCAR race that was supposed to run on Saturday night ended up getting postponed to Sunday. So Danny was pretty pleased to be able to watch it. And to any of you NASCAR fans, I hope that you noticed the paint scheme for the number 21. Virginia Tech. Mm -hmm. Just saying. Um, so I thought that was pretty cool. And so on Sunday, I'm like, well, what am I going to do? Because I've decided I'm not going to do this all that glitters. I'm not really feeling any of my other whips this particular day. So I'm like, Danny, what do I do? He's like, you should work on the horror movie alphabet. He really likes that project. And I'm like, no, I can't do that because I'm out of a couple of colors and I'm not really feeling like going to go get them. He's like, well, then, I don't know, do you want me to pick a number between 1 and 70? And I'm like, huh, 70, that's funny. That's a funny guy there. 76, I think. Anyway, um, I'm like, okay, so here are my options. I could work on my Chatelaine Frosty Knot Garden. I could work on Elephants by Jay Nettley Mayhew because I just kind of feel like it. Or I could work on the Hate Challenge. And he's like, you should do the Hate Challenge. And I'm like, yeah, you're right. I should do the Hate Challenge. So I spent Sunday working on the Hate Challenge. And my project for this is April by Anna Dittman. Now, by working on this, I was kind of um, struck with some ideas. A couple of things. First of all, I'm going to continue to work on this project every single day until the challenge is done. I've decided I'm going to do roughly four blocks, so I think I have five days left, not including today. So I've got today... Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. So technically, I should have this thing done by the weekend. Fingers crossed. Um, the other thing that it helps me decide was what I'm going to do about Heaven and Earth designs. Because I have currently five Hade Whips. And of those five Hade Whips, I have one page finish. The rest are all like a column or two half page at most. And then there's April, which I have one page finished from Hey Challenge 2. And that's disappointing. I wanted to make some serious headway on In This Moment by Jeremiah Kettner this year because I'm so obsessed with that artwork. I started two other Hades already this year, um, besides April, because April was a new star for this year. And then I have uh, Mini Pirate, which... I should be like done with or much further along than I am. So my heaven and earth designs, this is my plan. I want to make a new heaven and earth design star. I can't help it. Um, last year I experienced some heaven and earth design burnout because I stitched I think 13 heaven and earth designs pages last year. This year 
I have done one. So I don't have that burnout. So I'm still feeling the urge to start a new paid. And it just so happens that recently two charts came out that I I need. <laughs> it's not even, it's, it's want, but I need them. Um, and the first is The Cliffhanger by Amy Stewart. And the second is The Unsealy Court uh, Wrath by Jasmine Beckett Griffith. But I can't just start these guys. Like I can't, I can't justifiably start them because I've got these other hates that I'm so in love with, right? So here's my plan. I'm going to set myself a goal. And once I reach that goal, then I can make this new hate start. And that goal is 10 pages finished on Heaven Earth Designs across my whips. It doesn't have to be focused on one whip. It doesn't have to be... There's no deadline to it. It's just m motivation to be able to start Cliffhanger. So, because that's the one that I really, really want to start. So, that's my plan. I'm going to finish 10 pages, and then I'll get that new start. I'm counting the one that I have done on April. I'm counting that already. And then I'm close to finishing this second page. So I'll have two down, eight to go. My other four projects, because they are starts but not page finishes, they'll be kind of quick page finishes because they're already started. So, And then there's this other issue, this um, this current parking technique that's being required for this hate challenge. I think it's kind of speedy. Like, it's, it's quick. I find myself, I'm like, alright, I'm going to sit down and I'm going to do my four blocks today on April. Six blocks are done, and I'm like, well, there's only two left. <laughs> so it's quick. Um, it's getting a little bit more tedious now that I'm getting into the confetti on April, but nonetheless, it's kind of cool. So all of that to say, I'm focusing on some Heaven and Earth designs, and so this project is getting some daily love. So here's what the project will look like finished. This is April by Anna Dittman. I'm working in the second page that comes down in he this region. Okay. And you'll be seeing here a preview of what it looked like the last time. And I'm going to scoot back a little bit so I can set that bar on the ground. So as you can see, I've got I've got two and a half rows left, <laughs> and that's it. Um, so yeah, I'm pretty pleased. This is of course being stitched on my favorite um, 25 count antique white Lugana. Yeah, so you can see. That, I mean, it's a big swath of white. In amongst the sky blue color. Um, down here, let's see, in this corner down here, we're going to get into her forehead. This stripe right here, this little stripe of darkness you see right there, is this right here. Let me see if I can point it out better right there next to my finger there you see that and then this dark space right there that's the bottom corner so starting to get some into some other colors I'm not using just four or five colors anymore um, which is awesome <laughs> I love color and I'm so pleased to start using some this uh, one of the greens in here is one of my favorite DMC's it's 955 it's just like a minty green. So anyway, I'm loving this. I'm loving this process and I am going to be really happy to be able to um, just kind of do what I want but also what I need at the same time. That's pretty cool. So that will get some more work and you will Barring any total disasters, we'll see that page finish next week. So that's cool. 
Okay, so then, next, on Monday, we got started with the new, um, with week four of my rotation. And so, Monday, I started up in the alphabet with N for, and this one in particular is Nantucket Rose. So this is by Lavender and Lace, and this is what it will look like finished, kind of. The colors are a little different. And you'll be seeing a preview here of what this looked like last time. I am stitching this on a 32 count flax Belfast linen, and I got limited progress on this. I am sad to say, but I got some done. So, let's just fold up and come in close. So I worked the blended shade, the light shade in that region, and then the dark, and then lightening up. So I'm still up in that corner of trees, not, not a terrible amount of progress. On Monday, I don't even remember why. I know I was doing the Hade Challenge and I ended up doing a full, like a row <laughs> on Monday, because I just couldn't stop. So, that is Nantucket Rose. And this is another one that I... I want to get back to, but we'll see. We shall see. Okay, yesterday was uh, my Nora Corvette Nine Ladies Dancing. You'll be seeing a preview here of what that will what that looked like last time, and here is what it will look like finished. And you guys, I got a ton done yesterday. I was so pleased. The fabric is a 28 count China Pearl linen from Wichelt. Very stiff, but that's okay. Um, and it's still got some of the creases from being folded up for so long, but that's all right as well. It will be, it will be just fine. So I'm just gonna hold it back here because you can see it. First of all, this design is so tiny. I should have better planned and like stitched it maybe this way so that I could fit two on here, but say la vie. Um, so as you can see, I got I filled in some of the curtain at the bottom there, and then I finished up the DMCs in the curtain up there in the corner. Worked my way to do some of the dark purples over here. Then I finished up the skin for her torso, head, face, and arms. There's still a little bit from her legs that peek out underneath her skirt, but um, nonetheless, I got the skin done, which I am, of course, stitching one over one. Her hair is done sans beads, and then I finished up this shade of pink in the skirt. And yes, finished, because the inside of the skirt is all chronic. It's just sparkly. So this may I'm tempted to pull this out for all the glitters this weekend instead of my original plan. Only because there's like maybe two, three days work on this and then it's done. How cool would that be to get a Nora Corbett finish this year? This is the only one that I can imagine reaching that point if I put in some work on it. So we shall see. Um, I really like her. That is that. Okay, so now let's get into my whips for the upcoming week. Um, and intermixed in this conversation, I'm also going to talk about the sales that are going on um, because I was able to align my whips so that I got everything to kind of match up. Case in point today. Today being the 24th, it is the color a day challenge in Stitch Mania. My whip for today, based on my alphabetic rotation, is the uh, Not Quite White Work by Northern Expressions and Needleworks. So let me go ahead and show that to you. And I haven't stitched on this yet. I haven't done any stitching yet today um, for a multitude of reasons. But let me fold up this piece. This is being stitched on a 36 count Edinburgh linen 
and I believe it's cream. Yes, cream. Okay, I'm not gonna fold it up. I will just bring it in. So this I worked on for, uh, most recently, for the um, Summer Olympics Challenge for the Gold Day because there's an awful lot of Aussie gold in this design. What do I mean by an awful lot? This, I believe, has nine skeins. And I have another two in the Flossway bag. Three, four, five. Okay, there's eight here. So ten total. Gold. Just Aussie gold. So, anyway. Um, and during that day, I finished up the darning stitch background for this block here. So there's that. So I'm also using this for the color a day challenge. Why? Because gold is a shade of yellow and today the challenge is mellow yellow. And you guys will agree. It totally counts. It totally counts. So there's that. So I will be working on this project today not only for the color a day challenge but also as my whip. So that's kind of cool that I was able to make that work. And what I think I'm going to do, I want to do some more specialty stitches, so I'm going to do the double herringbone that is that um, borders the bottom of this one, and then get to work on the black underneath. No idea what the stitch is. Um, oh, preview here of what it will look like finished. Um, so you'll know what the stitch looks like. So that is that. Okay, let's see here. Oh, okay. I was like, that doesn't seem right, but it is. Okay, so then tomorrow, my next project is uh, Paula Vaughn's Quilts for All Seasons, and this is the block for November. So I'm calling this the November quilt, not block, quilt for November. So, I got a very teeny tiny little start last no October <laughs> for a cross stitch and discuss uh, Paula Von Zell, and I haven't picked it up since. So this is going to get some love. Um, I don't have the book with me. It's, I don't know where it is, it's with my August quilt. Um, Anyway, I don't have it with me, so you'll be seeing a, a picture here of what it will look like finished. And I'm stitching this on a 32 count anti or is it cream or antique white? It doesn't matter. Um, Belfast linen from Swaggart. So there's that. Looking forward to working on this some more. Um, I was obsessed with this book last year. And so these projects need some love. Okay, the Friday, <laughs> the Friday, Friday is the uh, the twenty sixth, and that is the uh, next installment of the Now I Know My ABCs. And this project, okay, so I'll be working on C is for cow. Now this project is actually my whip for Saturday. So I've rearranged things so that this can be my whip on Friday so that I can just work on this on Friday. So I'll work on C is for cow for the for the sal and then I'll probably go back up and work on A is for anchor to try to get that block filled out. So I am stitching this on a 40 count platinum Newcastle linen. And this is the progress that I have made thus far with A and B. So I'll probably work a little bit on the B so that I can map my way over to the C. So I can get C in there. Love that. This is going to have to be a project where hopefully there's no headaches that day because that would be bad. 
Okay, I'm gonna steal a quick sip of water here because I've been talking for 30 minutes straight. Okay, next. So weekends are my all day glitters. I've already talked about potentially doing nine ladies dancing, but I think I'm a little bit wishy-washy on this topic, um, but I think I'm just going to go with my original plan. So my original plan is to work on Snow Queen by Mirabilia. And this qualifies for all the glitters because, hello glitter fabric. Uh, my fabric here is a 32 count opalescent Belfast in Darkness Falls by Under the Sea Fabrics. I started this for the most recent cross stitch and discuss crazy seven. And that's my teeny tiny little start that I made. So I'm definitely going to get some more work on this um, this weekend and see what I can get done between Saturday and Sunday. I did tell you guys that on Sunday we're still doing the birthday for my brother, so we'll see what kind of progress I can do that day. I'm starting to lose my voice. That's really fantastic. Okay, so my next project, and this is my whip for Saturday. Um, it is the uh, Oriental Paper Lanterns, and it is by Marie Barber. Uh, this is from the Just Cross Stitch. Oh, let me look here. Do I even have it? Yes, I do. Just Cross Stitch, July, August 2015. And uh, I said it's by Marine Barber, right? I hope so. Uh, this was a Stitch Mania start for 2016. I'm stitching it on 32 count um, Belfast linen. And this is the little start that I had made. Oh, you'll be seeing a preview here of what it will look like finished. Uh, but this is what it, what it looked like at the very beginning. So there's that, and I will work on that and see how far I can get done on a Saturday. Okay, next I have another piece where I will be inserting a preview of what it will look like finished. This is Pretty Little New York, and it is by Satsuma Street. I most recently worked on this for the Wheels Challenge, for the Summer Olympics Challenge, and this is also on... 32 count Belfast linen from Zwagart. And I wish that I had, I wish that I could say I had all the time in the world on Sunday to stitch because I would finish this. <laughs> like I would just, I would just stick with it and just finish it, but I don't think I'm going to have the time to do that. So uh, for the challenge, I basically got in this region filled in. And I have just a couple more buildings, and then it's done. And then I can decide what I'm going to do with it. Oh, it's so pretty. I keep dreaming about New York. Anyway, love that. That will get some attention on Sunday. Okay, so on Monday, continuing with this uh, week four rotation, I will be working on Primrose Carrot. This is by the Cricut Collection. It is a freebie that I started during Stitch Mania. I don't have a preview image, so I'm going to link it down below um, so that you can go check it out because it's just the chart. And I don't know how long it's going to be available. So there we go. I'm stitching this on a 28 count Lambswool Jobelin. I believe it's by Wichelt. And this is the start that I made for Mania. And I really like my stitches on that fabric. That looks pretty nice. So I will work on the carrot and see what I can get done for that. And this is uh, a timeshare project with my uh, teacup. So anyway, there's that. That will get some love on Monday. Then on Tuesday, I have my Pumpkin Patch Farm Sampler. This is by The Victoria Sampler. 
and let's see where I am now. So I'm working on pumpkins. And I'm probably going to work on the little kids sitting in the pumpkin patch up in this region here. See what I can do with that. This is stitched entirely, entirely? Yeah, entirely in silks of a multitude of brands. Um, that came in a thread pack, kind of, for the most part. So there's that. Um, and this is a 32 count. I think it's winter moon or harvest moon. Something moon. It looks just like the Crane Belfast, but hey ho. And then um, I brought my whip for Wednesday because why not? It's the last day of August next Wednesday, which holy cannoli. I can't believe that it's September next week. But you know, besides the point. Um, I just figured I'd round it out. So my whip for next Wednesday is the um, Queen Anne's Lace, and this is by Nora Corbett, and you'll be seeing a preview here of what it will look like finished. This is from Just Cross Stitch April 2016. And this was a Stitch Mania start, and I managed to work on all of the greens, all of the whites, and all of the pinks. Or not all of, but I was able to touch those three color uh, shades, I guess, on my start. Um, and this is a 28 count cashel linen. In, um, it's an opalescent, so it's crystal. I picture this plus in Wren. Very pretty. I forgot that I had another opalescent fabric project. So there's that. Those are my whips for this upcoming week. Whoo, that's a lot of whips. I got a lot of stuff to do in the next week, which I like. So, um, so that's all I have for the projects as far as retail therapy is concerned. I wasn't going to have any, and then Hate announced their sale yesterday. So, <laughs> bought a chart. And that chart is Cliffhanger by Amy Stewart. So you'll be seeing a preview here of what that will look like. And that's really all that I've got for retail therapy. Um, very minimal. And that is going to continue for a little while. So, now let's talk about books. First of all, I have a major finish. Major, major finish. I did it! I finished it on Friday. Um, I was listening to the audiobook and I just powered through. And listened to the bitter end. This is A Dance with Dragons by George R. R. Martin, book five in A Song of Ice and Fire. I've talked about it several times um, because I've been reading this thing forever. Forever. Um, my final thoughts are that it's a great installment. It's It reads a lot like a setup book. Like a book that's getting ready for some big things. And a couple of big things happened in this one. But it's just got that air of like winter is coming. I mean that's that's really the best way that I can describe it. It 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 gives you that sense that like there's something major around the bend. And it's not here yet, but it's coming. So it's like it's a setup. Um which normally I hate. I hate setup books. Because I read a lot of young adult, and because a lot of young adult fantasy is in trilogies, book two almost always is a setup, and it drives me nuts. I really, I don't, I don't care for, um, for setup books like that. So anyway, um, but this I, I actually enjoyed. Um, a couple of things that are very different between this and the show, um, as I've mentioned several times before. I like this more. What are you going to do? Um, but I will always, always choose the book over the show. So, there's that. Um, so, finished that audiobook, and then I'm like, well, now what audiobook am I going to listen to? Well, that was really simple. Um, 
Pride and Prejudice by Jane Austen. And this is my very well-loved... What edition is this? Borders Classics. That's sad. Because Borders is no longer in, in existence. But... I uh, can see that there. Um... This I have read probably five or six times. It's falling apart. I really want one of the Penguin Drops Case editions of Pride and Prejudice. So maybe I'll put that on my wish list for Christmas. This book, I love it. I love this story. Um, and every time I read it, I get more from it. Um, so this time I'm listening to the audiobook because... Audible has recently released several classics read by recognizable actors and actresses. Um, I know that... <sighs> Who is it? Now I can't think of it. Is it... No, I can't think of it. Um, anyway, one example of this is um, Pride and Prejudice is read by Rosamund Pike. Rosamund Pike, you will know of as uh, Amy, Amazing Amy from Gone Girl. She was the actress for that. She also played Jane Bennett in the uh, Pride and Prejudice with Keira Knightley, which I know all Austin fans hate, but I really I love that. <laughs> I love that one. There's some some beautiful music in that in that movie. So anyway. Um, Rosamund Pike is, like, one of the most phenomenal narrators that I have listened to. She's so good. It's got to be her acting background, but she's so good. Um, it can't be easy going from being Jane and playing Jane to... Now we have the main character... Of Lizzie like you I just it's total it's it, it could be a different experience now there's quite a few years between the movie and this production but nonetheless I think it's very cool her Mr. Collins is like the best Mr. Collins in the entire world I giggle every time he speaks and it's just it's so perfect if you like Pride and Prejudice and you happen to enjoy audiobooks highly recommend this Rosamund Pike uh, edition of it because it's so good. It's so good. I can't wait to go listen to some more. Um, I've listened to about a third of it so far. Oh, I can't wait. There's some good stuff coming in. Yeah, I really enjoy that. Um, other books that I'm currently reading, I finally cracked open Night Film by Marisha Pessel. I didn't bring it over here for some silly reason. Um, which is the August book club, uh, or book club book for a Stitcher's book club. And there's got to be a better way to say that. Anyway, um, so I finally cracked that open, and I'm enjoying that a whole lot as well. It's weird and creepy, but it's, um, it's pretty cool. Um, I haven't read The Quick and the Thread in a long time, but I will get to that. Um... One thing that I did want to mention is that this week I am participating in a readathon, which is kind of crazy considering everything else that I'm trying to do stitchy wise, but I am. Um, and it is called The Bout of Books. Um, and I will link my blog down below as well as the participating blog or the host blog for this challenge. Um, it happens three times a year January, May, and August. I used to be able to time it with back to school or when uh, semesters ended. So this one happens to be just the week before a lot of schools start. The one in January is in winter break for a lot of universities. And then in May after graduation. Anyway, um, it's a week-long readathon. The period for sign-ups for eligibility for some grand prize is already over, but you're more than welcome to participate if you want. Um, you just can't win the grand prize. I've never won the grand prize because there are hundreds of people that participate in this thing. Um, it's just, it's a low pressure, you set your own goals, read what you can in a week. So 
long story short, my plan is to finish Pride and Prejudice and then my two Stitcher's Book Club books uh, before Sunday, which shouldn't be a problem if I'm honest. Um, I just have to settle down and, and get some reading done. So, yeah. And then one other thing that I wanted to talk to you guys about is a Stitcher's Book Club. Our September books have been selected. And I don't think I mentioned it on my videos before, but the genre that was chosen for September is historical fiction uh, focused on Tudor England. And so we had quite a few really great suggestions. Um, but the two books that were chosen are Dissolution by C.J. Sansom and Wolf Hall by the author whose name I cannot remember but will have written down here. Um, and you'll also be seeing their covers um, on the screen here. Um, so we'll be reading those for the month of September. I haven't gotten my copies yet um, because the poll ended just uh, yesterday at mm, midnight. Yeah. So, um, but I'm going to go get those here pretty soon so that we can start the discussions. Um, if you're interested in the Stitcher's Book Club, it will, of course, be linked down below. I know that I bombed miserably last week on the links, but I will remember to do that this week. So check it out if you'd like. Other than that, I think that's all I've got for you today. Um, appreciate you guys sticking with me. I know that this one was kind of rough. At least it was for me. Um, my eyes are still not happy with the contacts. <laughs> but say I love you. So... I thank you so much for watching, and I thank you for commenting, subscribing, and all of that suchness. Suchness. What is this? Um, and I will be back next Wednesday, where I'm going to talk my plans for next for September. Um, some cool things happening in September. So, yeah. Alright. Take care, guys. Happy stitching.